All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick, that's Kevin, and we are joined today by Nelson Shields. We got some uh, retributions to get started with. First things first. Hold on, hold on. Uh, no, no, we're joined by Mr. Philly. Fuck Nelson Shields. We're Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Well, you know, since you're bringing it up, and since I'm talking about retributions, Everybody knows way back when, episode 66, we had uh, multi-bet uh, wagers going hey. on. The Come very in. first one that was struck was between Nelson and Kevin about the Chiefs game versus the Eagles. And uh, what was that drink of choice there, Kevin? You know, I went so many bets against Nelson, I don't even remember. Whatever. Well, you know. So, so how do you feel about the game, and how do you feel about losing that bet, Nelson? Um, I, I, I think I feel worse about losing the game versus the bet because, like I was telling people on Facebook, the Chiefs are the new New England Patriots. You know, the refs are going to help them out as much as possible. And I, and I think Looking at that game, which I mean, neither defense was good at all. No, both defense. But I felt like, you know, to to just keep caught. I I felt like Philly didn't have the home cooking. You know, to get three touchdowns called back on some iffy calls at home. Clearly. The Chiefs being the new New England Patriots. That's that's all I can say. Do you agree? And with I that, mean, Kevin? a lot of my a lot of my peeps I'm, 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 at I'm, work I'm, I'm, was saying. A lot of my peeps at work was saying, "Well, Neil, okay, I we will give you two of them, but we can't give you one of them because we gave you one of the touchdowns because Gainwell actually fumbled and we recovered it before he went in for a touchdown." which I told him I really didn't see the replay on it, so I can't really argue on if he fumbled before he crossed the line or what. But It was out before he went down, and he should have challenged, but, you know, he didn't. But, you know, if you don't mind me, because go ahead, let's finish up. You got anything else to say? Yeah. Okay. Let me say right. this about the, the – the one touchdown that I felt like they, sh they shouldn't have called back that uh, – Every Chiefs fan in my job said that we got robbed on this. That pick play. That was not a pick play. You can be engaged with a defender within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And they wasn't even running a pick. If you looked at the play, the guy was chasing somebody that was in. He was moving. He was, uh, I forgot what they call it. It made me so mad, but. He was uh the guy he was trying to follow to cover was was in motion. They snapped the ball and then he went like the typical route where they go into the flat and you throw them the ball and they in the end zone. It just so happened that he ran into the guy that was engaged with the receiver. The receiver wasn't even trying to block, he was trying to go to the inside. But they tried to say that his arm extended and he pushed him. So a lot of people agreed that was robbery. Then we were arguing back and forth on the Devontae Smith touchdown because I felt like he, I, me playing, playing D-back in high school, I know they are taught to use the, okay. the they're, they're taught to use the, uh, the line, out, the out of bounds as a defender. So they try to force you out of bounds. You yeah. can't tell me that dude wasn't forcing him. And they said, well, because he was grabbing the Chiefs man's jersey. Well, he was grabbing him after the dude was already pushing him and had already grabbed him. So I told him, you know, they should have let that ride. And then they should have saw that he got three steps inbound before he caught it. So he was reestablished. And then, like I told him, I, the I can't remember actually the other uh, touchdown, but we was robbed so many times down there on the goal line. It was ridiculous as far as penalties. 
So go, let me hear your defense. Okay. Well, first off, you know, uh, Chiefs don't have no defense. But I'm gonna put that out there, you know. For what? For being two and what? Three. Right. I'm talking about just betting against you on the champ. Bad to pull out the belt, you know. You know what I'm saying? I'm the greatest. I just want to put that out there. Got my got my belt approved. Okay, all jokes. I, that was too funny to pass that up. I had to do that. Richard appreciates it. Now this is for the fantasy league. Whoever wins gets this belt. Yeah, we'll talk uh, about that later on because it probably won't be me. I don't know why you surprised. You saw your team play last night. This is what okay. I was. No, playing. no, no. Before you even go there, don't talk about my team <laughs> because first of all, my team put up a bigger fight against Los Angeles than your team did. Oh, we yeah, almost came back on them. Y'all getting y'all ass from the beginning of the game. And they came, came back on them. They y'all, y- guys from start to finish. Y'all thought y'all was hanging with them. Every time you got close, they pulled away a little bit more. They was toying with the you. What are you talking about, though? We had the lead for a minute. It was never in doubt. As soon as they got the ball back, they was marching right back down the field. Your defense is so like soft, this. it should be nicknamed Charmin. You need to go yeah. to Vegas because I saw Carr and Gruden wasn't getting along last night. I saw They're last night with Gruden having that I'll get rid of your ass look. They're fine. Y'all got problems. How we but, three and one and got problems and you two and two and you you perfect. That, two that two the math don't work. Won. The math don't work. Like you're still, in the, you're still, you're still in the cellar. You're still in the cellar. Never in the cellar. If you're in the bottom of the barrel, don't talk to me. Okay. That's what Pick said to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get back to this game. All jokes aside, this is what I will say. Your quarterback. And their rookie they grabbed that he used to play with, they go be a tandem if they keep them together. That's a nice one-two tandem. Philly needs to keep them together. Don't fuck that up like McNabb and T.O. Keep that shit together. Because they got a good rapport with each other. They got a good vibe. That's going to be deadly at some point. As far as the game, somebody had to win. We both got shitty-ass defenses. Somebody had to win. The official thing, I disagree. But we didn't got fucked over a few times games this season with official calls. So I don't agree with you on that. But at the same time, we are the – we're – how can I put it? Like I, I said to Richard before, they looking at us more than they look at Tampa. And Tampa don't win the one last season. But at the same time, like you said – like I don't care who I was up to, we got a chance to be the next Buffalo to go four times this and the next like Philly so many times to this thing, the second and third. So it just – we got a chance to make records. They may want to see happen. I don't know. But somebody had to win that game. It was a good offensive game both ways. Bullshit penalty here, bullshit penalty there. And just at the end of the game, Tyree Hill just said, let me go ahead and go to lunch. And he ate you there. Well, so, well so I'll, like, real, all jokes aside, the only reason why we, were, we won the game is because we finally fucking ran the ball. Yeah. So I think with Andy being – Andy did his little – go to the hospital bullshit or whatever, I think, and y'all may agree or disagree, that was the enemy's play call and more than Andy, the way we was running that rock. Because I finally yep. see the value when Hilaire and, and I already knew what Williams could do, but Williams finally got playing time. I saw the value in Hilaire because we was running that ball down y'all damn throw. Our defense did what they need to do when they needed to do it, but still overall, I could play corner, linebacker, or D and Barry and have them motherfuckers the way they playing right and now. And that's how you know that offense was more B enemy on Sunday than Reed. Because Reed is yeah. notorious for being pass happy. He did it in Philly. Nelson, you know that. Yeah. And, and he did it at the beginning of his tenure in Kansas City. Well, okay, this is what also, I want to say too I'm about well, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Well, one thing I want to say is have a game where neither team punt there's that's no d you i can't give no defensive credit at all to yeah. nobody even though philly actually intercepted my home i can't even give them credit because they never made him punt you know they neither team matter of fact neither team ever kept the other team from getting on the other team's side of the field yep team so neither team had a had a defense the only thing I would give Philly that I saw them do that I haven't seen no team in the NFL do yet um, when they play the Chiefs is they actually shut Kelsey down 
Yeah. I don't know how they did that. I don't know if they decided to play one on one against Tyreek Hill. Well, that's that's and, the way to beat Kansas City. You you either shut Kelsey down or you shut Hill down. Because up until this Sunday, this past Sunday's game, it was always one of them or both of them because they didn't have a running game. Now that they've discovered that they can actually run it, that's going to make it harder. Yep. You see, the, the thing is, we spent too much time. Now, let, me, let me rewind that back. This past game, Pat finally played like Pat. He stopped on his bullshit. He played a quarterback game. Instead of being Madden, he was a quarterback. Past two weeks, you hearing uh, Hardman and Robinson, oh, we ready to be the number two, we ready to be the number two. What does Pat do? I'm about to be like Madden. Y'all the only ones I'm throwing to. Did either one of them make any big numbers the past two weeks before this game? No, because I got Hardman on my no. fantasy squad. They did nothing. And nothing. that basically, come this game, that shut them the hell up to show that you say you ready, you didn't have catches, but you can't have six catches for 30 yards. What are you doing? To be Actually, like, like, I heard like, Pringles' like, name more. Nelson, I heard Pringles' name more than I heard back. anybody else. Exactly. Yeah, I heard Pringles' name more than anybody else. Exactly. Tyreek was just. Pringles go fall around and be the number two. Pringles go fall around and jump over Robinson and jump over Harmon because both of them up for new deals. Pringles go around and be here and we'll let them go because they too busy catching the ball. High school street, let me turn around. Let me try to run right past you. No, nigga, catch it, turn it up. That's all you're going to do, catch, turn up. They catch, drop back five yards, then try to run at the defender. This ain't backyard football, but that's how they playing. So Pat finally got back doing what a quarterback's supposed to do, hit who you know you need to hit, and Tyreek finally realized, I can run, because he was running past every fucking body, which was good to see. Now, now here's what Tyreek did. Do you notice the routes that they had him running? Yeah, the typical routes they was having run last season, the year before that. Yeah, instead of, hey, go that way 40 yards and I'll, I'll throw mm -hmm. it eventually. Now, yeah. at the end of the game, when they, you know, had to respect the run, it opened up. But yeah. they treated him like a regular receiver before that. But you see what Robinson and Harmon, y'all about to take these end around, these pitches, you about to get these slants, you about to take it to the house, that opened things up. Sorry, you niggas are slot receivers. You're not number twos. We drafted slot receivers. Either accept it or move the fuck on. Andy Reid needs to sit them know. down. Andy Reid needs to sit them down and tell them, look, there's a reason why Sammy Watkins is not here anymore. No, there's a reason why the Giants what? didn't sign you, Robinson. You're not the one number one they thought you were. How about that? You know, I'm going to get this in, too. I don't know if this is the right time, but our cousin – you remember this, Tay? He threw a conspiracy theory out about this game. Yeah. And you know what? It made me, it damn near made me think it's true. Because I saw something on the internet where I was like, these motherfuckers. You know, they were saying that Philly purposely threw that game against Dallas last week so that the Chiefs and Eagles will have the same record going into Philly against Andy Reid, who then no. will win his 100th game against the Eagles, his it's, old team. Philly wouldn't do that because – But I know – like Not, against, about to not say, against Dallas. Not against That's Dallas. a division rival. No. That's the only thing that makes me say that that theory is not close to being true. They would never throw a game against Dallas. Here's the thing. You know, they I've seen them, I've seen them beat Dallas when Dallas was going to the playoffs and they only had four wins. That game is basically, you know, it's two games that they will play hard during the season. Dallas at home and Dallas in Dallas. See, when y'all play Dallas and and home next. Well, y'all played Dallas in Philly last week, or in Dallas? Nah, we played them in Dallas. Well, y'all catch them in Philly. You gonna see the real Cowboys right now? They on that Prescott high because they got their quarterback back. That's gonna keep slowing down as the season goes. So that's when y'all gonna be able to catch them. But I think Philly's gonna be there in the end because that offense is potent. Every just by if you look at the NFL right now, 
every other team has a big offense. That name one dominant defense in the league right now. Let's be real. Well, okay. The, the, I think next week you're gonna just you gonna know if Philly's offense is real or not. They play against Carolina. Let, let's, granted, let's go Carolina there. Got, let's go there. Let's, let's let's look at next week. Tell uh, me about we Carolina. We're done. Before we do that, so Nelson, you know you lost to me, right? But I can't I can't accept that loss the way it was. Cause both teams were shitty. I'm gonna knock it down from a bottle to a six pack. Cause that was just ugly on both sides. No, so I'm, I'm paying my debt. You said I'm what? Going with my bottle. Okay, all right, wait. I tried to show you some love with your raggedy ass. Loss days. is a loss is a loss. Okay. And hey, you know I what? I, I appreciate that, Nelson. And I hope I I, I hope. Well, I wasn't going to say I hope Tony does the same thing because I know he will because I'm not knocking mine down because I already know we split. <laughs> I see the way your defense is. I already know we split. <laughs> <laughs> no, a loss is a loss. I feel like if you – like I told you, Richard, I'm on the show, win, lose, or draw. You know. Uh, yeah, gotta, I like that. You got to be humble. Hey, it's all to him. You know, you, can't, you got to ride with your team regardless. Yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, you know, I, I ride with him, you know, because we're oh, champions. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. Yeah, I ain't even defending Super Bowl champions. I know, but they treat us like we are. Right. <laughs> okay, so let's start off with Kansas City then. Who's your next game? Buffalo. Is Buffalo. that a W or L? Real talk, it should be an L because Buffalo's – Yep. Buffalo is very upset with us because we keep giving them L's. But, but that's the thing. strange thing is, it's at Arrowhead. No, hear, but hear me out. We see this is where the league I think needs to revamp their scheduling because we play Buffalo, Baltimore, New England, and Houston too many times in Tennessee for the past five straight seasons. Buffalo is taking the L every time. They're due a win, but they're going to be over aggressive. Because Josh Allen wants to be the next Pat Mahomes, and that's when they're going to mess up and we're going to win like we did last time. Because that playoff game, they had us up against the wall, and we were just like lurking, waiting on that mistake. And Josh Allen threw a heater to Diggs that was a little too much on it. Diggs couldn't catch it. Then Tyran got an interception, and we never looked back after that. It's going to be the same game. I disagree. I think this time around, y'all going to get a steady zo- dose of Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. I really do. But that's the thing. They started like that last time, and they stopped. That's wrong. They're going to get overzealous because they want Josh Allen to be Pat Mahomes. Look at the contract they gave him. They want him to be mentioned up there with – because they're trying to mention uh, Hubert up there over him now. Buffalo still trying to find the next Jim Kelly. They think they got it, and they want the league to acknowledge it, and the league ain't doing it. You're getting more press on Garoppolo and 40, with Sam Fran than you're getting on Josh Allen. Well, I'm I, okay. You know what? I don't think this has to do nothing with the offense, the Bills offense. The Bills offense come in and do what they do. They're going to score 30 on Kansas City easy. It's going to be a walk in the park for them to score. Yeah. Is what can that defense do? That Bills defense has put up two shutouts already this year. So I can tell you right now, Mahomes then will be punting. Okay. I don't doubt yeah. that. But see, here's the thing, though. Man, you said they put up run. 30. You said they put up 30. We put up 35. So. <laughs> you think, okay, y'all put up. 42 against a Philly defense is pretty much as bad as y'all defense, which y'all think y'all defense is terrible. Yeah, and Philly's defense is in the lower tier of the NFL. Buffalo's defense is in the top three. Are you saying y'all going to score 30? I think y'all scored 30 in the playoffs against them. When y'all was, when y'all was like better than what y'all are now. And they let quiet as kept. Bills have gotten better. Yeah, the gotten Chiefs better. have got worse. They've gotten better because they've been in the system longer. For us, we still ain't got the number two receiver. We still ain't got that next man up because them two lame-ass niggas 
But Pringle, I think he's going to be the number two. If we can get anything out of Josh Gordon, that's great. Because if we could have had a healthy Sammy Watkins and a healthy line, the Super Bowl may have been different. But, you know, two tails in a bucket, bucket, we took it to the stage and lost. We're going to see what's going to happen in this Buffalo game. I think when it's all said and done, though, AFC West is going to be the most competitive division this season. Oh, it I is. already said that. Especially yeah. if, uh, now, if, now. if Teddy B come back within a week or two of his concussion and keep Denver going, that's going to be going down to the last game or two for the division. Because the Chargers might be the best complete team out there. They They're not. Good last year. They They're not. Quarterback. I mean, I saw the game last night. Yes, we lost 28 to 14, but we figured them out in the second half. We just made some mistakes down the stretch. Had Carr not thrown that bad pass and got sacked, it would have been 21 21. We're going to overtime. And you know that's Oakland, or excuse me, Vegas's MO. Let's just hang around for a while, tie it up, go to overtime, and win it. That's been what they yeah, all about. They, they shut that receiver down, too. I couldn't believe they lost after shutting that receiver down. William. Oh, William. Hold on. Let me tell you something about our, our defense. You were talking about y'all shitty defenses. That's where we were last year. We're now ranked number 15. And I said last year, if we could have been ranked 20 or higher, we would have won two extra games and gotten the playoffs. We're now 15 in defense. We are going to the playoffs. I'll take this L. This L, I, I'm glad we got this loss because it's a wake-up call. Well, so crazy. Yep. That one game is going to mean a lot this season. That one extra game they added, that's about to mean a whole lot to Yes, me. yes. Because with a 16-game season, 16 is an even number. 17 is an odd number. Somebody's going to be the odd man out. Yep. It's and I believe to... in the AFC West, three teams are going to the playoffs. I was about to say, you could have one league, one division dominate the playoffs. You know well, I mean, it, 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 about it, that? If you look at the AFC East, they're only getting the division champ in the playoffs. Buffalo. No, call, yeah, call, Buffalo. Call it now. Buffalo's going. New England. Jets, well, Kansas City Miami. Still Kansas City's still going. Kansas City got it. Look at the uh, AFC South. Baltimore. That's it. I might give you Cleveland. Don't no, believe the hype with Cincinnati. They're doing it with smoke and mirrors right now. I don't think Johnny uh, – I'm about to say Johnny – I don't think Cleveland's quarterback can take the pressure because they should have won that – he's, he's cracking. We yeah. had they love wide open on that pass and hit him in the back. Yes, both New York teams won last week. Yeah. Giants beat the Cleveland? Yes. Both New York teams took it to overtime. You. Both New York teams won. The Titans went down to the told Jets. told you Cleveland was not a good team. They just – they, I mean, they are – they to me, they are eight and eight team. Because they – their quarterback is really not spectacular. Odell Beckham is hurt. Now you got Landry pretty much out for a majority now, of the now season. Now you said they're eight and eight team. Since we got 17 games, are they nine and eight or are they right. eight and nine? I'll say eight and nine. Uh, I give them nine and eight. I give yeah, them nine and eight just because. I'll put it like this. If they didn't have Chubbs and Hunt, they wouldn't have the yep. winners they got now. That's why I'm saying they'll be nine and eight because one thing they do have, when you have two solid running backs like that, you have two – you know, receivers that are supposed to be stars, they just injury prone right now. You can get to, you know, 500 or better. Come on. Man, but when he had that wide open throw to win the game for Cleveland to Beckham and hit Beckham in the back because that noodle arm couldn't make that pass. And then it will make so bad they're trying to get him out saying his shoulders messed up when he got hit the week before. I'm going to tell you the real reason why he's not that good and why the Chiefs are going to have a bad season. Both quarterbacks <laughs> spent too much time doing commercials in the offseason. Yep. You don't go yep. down to the weak ass shit. Hey. Commercials ain't got shit to do with nothing. Hey, yeah, he's going to need some insurance. He's going he gonna to need some insurance when we roll in. 
And we taking another victory lap too. Warm up the bus. Yeah, I think Mahomes and Mahomes and already threw what more interceptions than he threw last year. Yeah, that was bound to happen. He a gunslinger. Tell me, he had some of these last year. Now, I, ha- I have I have no problem with gunslingers because you know Brett Favre was prone to throw interceptions all the yeah, time. No, like, but he was, was one of the baddest boys. Huh? His mother finally started the way they wasn't scared to catch the ball. Uh, I'm just saying because when you throw in interceptions like that, that means that you you always the other team always got a chance. They don't have to necessarily yeah. they don't have to necessarily make you punt. All they have to do is make you throw a stupid interception. And, and he he's done that. that. He, even the uh, Philly interception, kind of a stupid pass. It was a Charger game. Coverage on Kelsey. Although I still say the first pass in that Chargers game where Deuce should have called him and walked into the end zone, that put the game on a bad trend. And that wasn't on my own. Deuce should have caught that. All three of us could have caught that pass. But dude, he just he fucked that up. Fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, they cut him when they put Gordon on the squad. Okay, let me ask you this. Now, you done brung up Josh Gordon. There's a reason why he's not with the last three teams he's been with. I'm just going to put it like that. And that's all I'm going to say about it, because that's all that needs to be said. He's going to smoke himself out of Kansas City, too, before it's all over. He disappoints me. talent and you got the look, you'll keep getting chances. We got to Ron Ortez kept coming back in the league. Him and um, old boy from Philly, Lance uh, Stevenson. Both of them was nutcases, but because they had talent, they had the size, they kept getting to come back into the NBA. If Josh Gordon was 5'11", he'd have been done. But since he's, what, 6'3", 6'5", come on back, bro. Come on back. See, I think he has a mental issue. Yeah, he's stupid. Because I think about, I think about people that are working – just to make ends meet. And you telling me this dude can't stop smoking to become to set his his kids' kids up for life. It's a lot he of them like that. Man, but they know they know how to do it. Bad. Get your ass over there in the offseason and do all that. Two months before the season starts, clean it on up and get to training camp. Be a though. top three receiver in the league. Both stat wise and money. Yeah, he was a he was a dog. But the thing was, he was in Cleveland to start his career. Okay, but I see the numbers he put up. Quarterbacks you can't even name that he had in Cleveland. Yeah, but just as far as the organization though, the organization wasn't ran to take care of him. What about New England? Put nose. What about New England? Remember, he was putting those numbers up against Pittsburgh. No, no. Baltimore. Now back up though. Back up. Lewis, Baltimore. He played in New England. He played in New England. To take care of New England, he was just New England brought him in just to show they were seeing. They weren't trying to take care of him. New England only take care of certain players. Hell, when they dumb Randy, as all Randy did for him, they won't worry about no damn Josh Gordon. Well, because they don't pay receivers money. Come on, you got to remember, they had and Troy Brown doing Walker, it. You ain't paying nobody. And Wes Walker for damn sure got you some of them rings. Dude, they didn't even pay Brady. That's why he went out of town. No, so, Brady got paid. That's not like Brady. Brady got paid. Brady just – He didn't get like paid this. what he felt he was worth, though. So. Brady took A – he didn't take A-plus money. He just took A money. He could have got A-plus checks from them. If he wanted to. If I saw Patrick Mahomes get half a billion and I just beat him in the Super Bowl, you damn right I'm going to another team. Yep. Absolutely. He was with another team when he won, though, so that's kind of messed up on that. Uh, we got <laughs> Are we going to bring this back or are we just going to do these 10 and be done? No, nah, me and you going to bring it back, but, uh, you yeah. know, we we, we going to close this NFL stuff out because <sighs> – all right, so real quick, Nell, your team is one and three. What do you think the record gonna be at the end of the season? Um, I think they'll be uh ten and seven. 
Playoff or no playoff? Uh, I think they'll be right there at the, at the end, the battle for a playoff position. I don't think they'll get it. So this, I mean, you got Arizona, you got uh, you got the Rams, you got uh, of course you got. I hate to say it, you got Dallas, um, even San Francisco. You know, okay. San Francisco don't look bad. So, how bad did that Dallas North loss look? Looks terrible. Yeah, what? North looks terrible. Green Bay ain't what people think they are. Aaron Rodgers, he's, his mind is gone. He ain't trying to be there. But how bad did that Dallas loss hurt you? Because I felt you you hurt on Facebook. I, I felt the anger. That loss hurt me worse than the Chiefs loss. Because it's Dallas. Hey, Dallas. And then your Uncle Duncan is at the lake. Said, hey, good luck next week. You're going to need it. And then I told him, yeah, when we whoop your ass, I'm going to post and I'm going to tag you. And so then all the Dallas people was attacking me. Because that's, I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. When you put that post, you're like, y'all let us lose. I was like, that nigga really hurt. <laughs> yeah, you read my post? Yeah, that's hey, it. Da- I, I meant that Dallas took our soul. I mean, you could look at Philly's face in that game. They almost look – I would almost say they look scared. Like, they couldn't – they didn't know what to do. I feel you on that, though. Uh, the it's Chiefs, a division opponent. The Chiefs had – at least with the Chiefs, you know, they had determination. They was like, no, we not letting them get away from us. We going – all we got to do is stay right here in striking range, and we can win this game. They the mentality was different against the Chiefs than Dallas. I would have, you know what? If the if the Chiefs beat them forty to twenty, I could accept that. You know, but, I think that was more of an Andy Reid we don't want him to get that hundred win against us. I think that's why they was you know the way they was or whatever. So my, my last Philly damn question. about that hundred win. I I would have I don't I would have rather them beat Dallas last week and then get destroyed by the Chiefs this week. This past week. That's okay. how I feel about that. My last question about, about the about the Eagles. Do y'all stick with what y'all got and get better? Or do you think you need to change coaches? No, you got to give. Coaches next Monday. You got to give coach a chance. He, you know, to me, one thing I don't like that the defense ain't doing they not rotating uh, the defensive end. That was our bread and butter. That's why we could rush four people and get pressure. They don't rotate the linemen. He rotate the linebackers. And our linebackers are terrible. They are the worst linebackers in the league. I think we might have the worst. Nah, uh-uh. Our linebackers are the worst. And then our free safety is terrible, too. I know Nelson kept getting attacked by Tyreek Hill, but Tyreek gonna do that to he gonna do that to ninety percent of the uh, corners one on one in the league. That's like our corner reject Nelson, right? I guess so, because <laughs> everybody kept saying, "No, that's ironic that you kept getting beat." That nigga been trash for us. We would never cut him. We just finally let him go. His contract was up. Yeah, when I say y'all picked up. Uh, uh, trash, y'all picked up trash. Yeah, that that I think you got to let that defensive coordinator go before you let this coach go. Okay. Because this coach comes with a – one thing he's got to clean up is Philly set a record for the amount of uh, penalties they've done in four <laughs> games. They have 44 penalties in four games. Damn. And this coach is known for discipline. So he's got to show some progress going into the next game. Or then he's on the hot seat. Our linemen probably are – our linemen are probably 60% of the penalties we get. They either downfield too far or they holding too much. Damn. All right, last thing, then we'll let you get up out of here. Big fight Saturday. 
Who you taking, Fury or Wilder? First of all, I didn't answer your text. I will be there. Okay, cool. Uh, me and Chris, there. you know Chris love Wilder. To me, if, if it all depends on, I'm going to say this for the last time, it depends on Wilder. If he comes in, i never seen a man with such a reach that don't jab and box. Look at, all he got to do is look at Muhammad Ali's tape. Yep. That's old school, but that's all he got to do. He's gifted with him. that power. If he don't box and he don't jab, Fury's going to knock him out. And I know your brother was talking about, oh, Fury don't look, you know, like he did. It don't matter. It, it, it's not about Fury. Fury's going to come in with the same game plan. Wilder has to change. You ain't no excuses. You, the, everybody said the first fight, you only got a draw because you hit him with a lucky punch and knocked him down. You got to come out and show that you something different. Because uh, I'm going to keep saying the heavyweight division is a bum league. If the best we got is Wilder. Because if you think about the history of boxing, Evander Holyfield would have knocked Wilder out in the first three rounds. He would have knocked Fury out in the first three rounds. Tyson would have knocked either one of them out in the first few rounds. Muhammad Ali would have knocked them out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this is the worst heavyweight division I've seen in eons. See, here, here's the sad part. And I should have hit you up last Saturday, and I didn't. Uh, a homie came through. We watched UFC from 6 to down near midnight. Paper, the pre-card, the mm -hmm. pre-card, then the actual fights. That was more entertainment than I've seen in boxing lately. And the chicks on there that was getting at each other. So when they was in the ring king, how you was going to toe the toe with somebody? Yep. They was doing like that the whole time. So Saturday when you come through and remind Shay, and if you got Chris number, tell Chris he's number if he want to. I want to see if this is going to be just as entertaining as well as our MMA wise. Because if not, MMA is beating the dog shit out of boxing. Yeah, cut well, because they don't do all this. Oh, we can't reach the money. Them people fight. They fight the best. You know what I mean? Crawford shouldn't have to chase Earl Spence. Earl Spence should say, I'll be at your doorstep. Can't All right. Nobody beat me. We got less than but a few seconds left. Do. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap it. Nelson, we appreciate you coming on. Good, Thank good looking out as always. Thanks for coming. Uh, job, I wish Cubs. the outcome good was job. a little bit better. <laughs> good job, Cubs. Good job. You That's know, all right. No, don't worry about him. Thanks, I'll Nelson. I appreciate you, man. When you come over Saturday, I'll make sure I greet you with this. I see you. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Two Dudes Podcast. Rick, Kevin, man. Kevin, oh, Kevin the jokester. Got, got them jokes. I ain't mad at you, though, coming in with that belt like that. It was too fun to pass it out. It was too fun. All right. I want to go came through some. The, came to me on the flock. I was like, hey, Kevin, go right that box for me. I want to uh, go through some news with you. I want to go through three right. articles real fast, all three of these at once, because right. they kind of tie in together. Uh, one of them you sent me. No, two of them you sent me. Uh, I, I guess your boy Kells is getting ready to rat some people out uh, when he goes into the joint. Mm-hmm. And Bill Cosby's trial date for a civil lawsuit uh, over 1974, let me say that again, 1974, Playboy Mansion sexual assault. And then that third thing is Emily Ratajkowski accuses Robin Thicke of groping her breast on the Blurred Lines video set. And she claims that she was nothing more than a hired mannequin. All right. That video came out in 2013. Let me say that again, 2013. The reason why I'm uh, putting those dates out there, I understand about the Me Too movement. I understand about how people need to speak out because things get done to them. Why is she coming out now 
as opposed to 2013. And what happened between Bill and his accuser happened in 1974. I cannot believe that this is just now coming to the light of day. And when it comes to Kells, yeah, he, he's straight saying, if I'm going down, you're going down. Okay, I'll do Kells first, get the out of the way. I don't blame him. Don't talk shit on me when I know where your bodies are at. Because just as quick as mine got pulled, and it was with very little evidence, I'll get yours pulled with just that much less and shorten my time. I'll take the Frank Lucas way of prison. Holler at your boy. Now, as far as Bill, Bill's continually to get fucked though. You done took the man's last years. Now you want to take his money to make his wife poor and homeless. <clears throat> because you're mad that for what? Where and the thing is with these females, and it's gonna sound wrong, I got daughters, people. But there is a thing called statue of limitation. Did we move the line on that and no one told us what's going on? And I'm getting tired of the law and order. I feel safer now to come out because this, 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 this person did. With Bill, if I, yeah, if I, in the grotto, if we got down, but then I gave you some bread, or I paid for your college, you accept it. That may sound wrong to people, but how is she not prostituting herself out? How is it not something to be wrong against that person? So it's just like they make an example out of Bill, and I'm like, he paid his debt by what he gave. And the man ain't doing nothing to nobody now. I was just like, let's come on, let's be real about it. But you know, everybody want to prove something. But and but here's my like, thing. Here's my thing. If I steal money from you and I run out of town and I'm gone for 20 years, and then we meet back up 20 years from now, ain't a damn thing you can do. Because the statute of limitations is run out. No, you sexually assault somebody. No, no, that depends. If it's like a bank or something like that, it never runs out. You're well, always that's federal. On that's list. federal. Yeah, I'm saying it never runs out. Still, we have to draw the line on this. We have to have some kind of statute. I mean, again... I feel bad for a lot of these women that this stuff has happened to. But at the same time, how much of it is a cash grab compared to seeking justice? And I want to say this for whoever listens. We're not condoning anything. But if laws are there, laws need to be enforced and followed. If there is a 10-year statute of limitation... You shouldn't be able to come at year 15 and file a suit. This Robin Thicke lawsuit, somebody must have told you you can get some money. You need to realize Robin ain't got no money. Yeah, his dad passed. His wife's still alive. He's beefing with the mama now. Well, with the, his dad's wife. Uh, Robin ain't had a hit since Blurry Line. And he had to give away some money on Blurry Line. Him and Pharrell. I think T.I. is the only one that got the one scathed on that. This, uh, this is crazy. Sure. All right, let's go to the next topic. Fire these off real quick. Um, so I guess I'll go through backwards. We didn't talk about fantasy. I'm going to cover this real quick. Fantasy and um, our picks league. First, I want to start off with the Picks League. You took a slight dip. That's not too bad, over. though. You say what? That's how you jumped over me. Not in Picks. I thought you did. That was only for that one day. The Sunday slated games had to come out then. Wow. Yeah, so you are officially ranked number uh, 13. So you just fell from 12 to 13. I, I went up. I'm now number 16. So okay. I'm making moves. But to give you a, a, a preview of what that's like, I'm ranked 16 with 39 wins. Number four person has 44. So they only five ahead of me. So it's all good. 
I'm going to get there. Now, if you look at uh, fantasy, it's ugly. I'm 0-3. I'm looking to avoid an 0-4 start because once you fall into that hole. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, 0-4. I'm looking to avoid an 0-5 start. My bad. And um, you sitting on top of 3-1. and Trying. Man, I, I like that in you. I like that in you. Now, you got Dathan coming up. So that should be a W. No, he got I got a I got Tony coming up. One of us has to win. So one of us hey. will get our first win of the season. Now Tony put it on um Lamont until Eckler had that game against the uh, Raiders. Yeah. So Tony got a squad. Like oh. Dathan got a squad too. So oh I know one game at a time. I'm afraid I'm of Tony's squad because sooner or later Aaron Rodgers is gonna wake up. Yeah, he got to at some point. Yeah. All right. Uh, I hope you're not a cereal eater. Kellogg's no, workers at, at all U.S. plants are getting ready to go on strike. Kellogg's? Kellogg's. So buy all the cornflakes and Rice Krispies you can because uh, they're going to be off shelves for a little while. Well, you know, I see right now I'm kind of – I'm off cereal for the time being. Well, you know that that all that milk can't be good for you anyway. You don't yeah. need all that. Eat healthy, boy. Some bacon and eggs. Well, actually, turkey bacon, not regular bacon. Shit, yeah, you, that's all you, bro. I want no damn turkey bacon. The, them is two words that shouldn't even be put together in the same sentence. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's like soy burgers. Uh uh. Can't do it. Now, you plan on going to go see any movies uh, this weekend? Hell no, I'm still protesting the theater. You still protesting? Why are you protesting the theaters? I, just, I ain't really tripping. I don't know if I have pain scene that I just want to go see lately. Well, you know, Venom Let There Be Carnage is out. It's the number one movie in the country. Take the girls to see Adam Family, too. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I have any other special news that I know of. Yeah, that's all I got for uh, the week in general. You got anything else before we uh, shut it down? Um. Oh. How you feel about your boy Jordan making noise in NASCAR this past weekend? Although this past Monday on a rain shortened run, I, I'm affected or more needs to be done. Both, and, and let me tell you why. First of all, not just Jordan, but congrats to Bubba Wallace as well. Um, I think it's a good thing for Jordan to get this W. Because just like in his playing days, once you get that W, it kind of makes you want to work harder to get the next one. In this case, as an owner, he might put a little bit more into his team getting the next one. And, and we'll see if that snowballs. So it's a good thing. Winning's never a bad thing. Well said. Well said, my brother. Um, before we go, um, I, this is what I meant to tell you. You're going to love this. The demand is so high for the Bronco to where when my friend took her to get an oil change and everything, when she left, they sent her an email asked her they wanted, if she wanted to sell her vehicle. <laughs> Wow. Mind you, she only had that bitch, what, four, five months? Yeah. She ain't had it a year yet. They sent her an email after she wanted to sell it, and they was giving, I think, a blue book, blue book value for it. They like, don't worry about if you got a loan or whatever. Basically, like, we're going to give you whatever because we can take it and we can send it to this person and get what we and get what we paid you back off of it. Yeah, and, and 
I believe it, and that's one of the reasons why I'm seriously starting to consider not getting one. That was I mean, going to my next question. Are not, you still burning that torch, or are you starting to look elsewhere? A little bit of both. Um, I mean, God willing, if I can still hold out till the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023. However, I'm hearing a lot of reports from owners that go to pick up theirs and the week that the dealer calls saying it's going to be ready, they're getting dealer markups upwards of 10 grand. And I think it depends on where the dealer is at. I've yes, heard it does. That some of them are trying to charge more. I think it's where they're located. I think it's more the, with them you in a small town, so where they only go get some, make so much. Like they're trying to get back money for uh, the holding, I guess you just say, as if the vehicle was there and you just never came to get it. So well, what these dealerships are claiming, though, is they're claiming that they're trying to do that to keep people from flipping the vehicle and making a profit themselves. I don't think anybody's doing that. No. Yeah. That, that sounds real asinine. So let's say you wake up tomorrow and say, I'm good. Ford got a lot of shit that they didn't flip that looks beautiful. Not saying you're going forward, but if you go another vehicle, what you going to get? I've got so many options. If you just stick with Ford right now, I could get an Escape like uh, what Heather has. It, it's pretty nice. I've drove it several times. I mean, it's not bad. If, if I want with the same vehicle though, I, I ain't worried about that. I mean, I thought you might well go to Maverick. I can see you in a truck. I could, but to me, that just seems kind of small, and that's why I want the big body Bronco. Not the Bronco Sport, and and not even the two door Bronco. I want the four door, and I am not willing to get the uh, the convertible. We've already discussed that a couple episodes. Got to have a hard top. So, I mean, we'll see. And and, and the whole thing of what I was going to do, I was just going to get the base model because there are so many aftermarket things that you can get on them now. They, yeah. they made this vehicle to specifically build it your way. And yeah, I, was like, um, I was looking and seeing what they're saying is I saw where other dealerships are getting Broncos back from people or people are putting their Broncos on Carvana or whatever, shit like that, selling it. I think it's like it's about at least 10 Broncos in the area for sale. Yeah. Um, and, and see, that's one of the things dealers hate. People getting something, they're not making a profit off of it. But the uh, owner is making a profit, and that's why they do all these markups and things. But that's neither here nor there for me. I mean, you and I both know that I'm not getting it to flip it. I'm I'm definitely going to get it to drive it, but yeah. I I don't want to say yes or no right now because twelve months from now is a long ways away. Anything can happen. So basically, what you're telling me is this time next year you gonna have something. Uh, I wouldn't say this time next year. It could be somewhere between this time next year and this time December of next year. It'll be the last quarter of next year. So anywhere between August, we'll say, and and December. Okay. And if if I woke up and that was that day tomorrow, it would still be the Bronco. But I, I'm going to continue to be practical and reasonable. I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm paying – more than I want to for the vehicle. But at the same time, if I'm going to make payments on something, it's going to be exactly what I want. Okay. And you never know. A couple car companies might come out with something. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of good. You know, right now is the best time. There's all kind of stuff out there. Yeah. But I, I, I'll be doggone if I pay a Cadillac Escalade monthly payments on a Ford Bronco. I feel you. I, I feel you on that one. All right. We're, we're, gonna go, 
Like I said, I don't worry about that Mustang because I didn't know until I was over a homie's house for his birthday and his friend was telling me that uh, E-Class that I wanted, whatever they calling it, that outsold the regular Mustang last year. Really? Yeah. That's got to be a that. that's got to be a first for electronic vehicles. I'm happy about it, but I'm not happy about it. Why are you not happy? Price can go up on the next round because they dropped in 2020. I don't want the 2020 model. If anything, I want this year's model. By the same time, you get your Bronco. So it's going to be a markup if they're doing that damn good. Yeah. I can see I'm that. I'm trying to avoid going to a car lot. So I end up saying, fuck it, let me get it now. And then had that bankruptcy rate on and everything, too. I'm trying to avoid all that. So I got to wait until that shit's over. But at the same time, I'm just like, if me, we both in the same boat to where I need for either, I need for bankruptcy to end that I can go about 90 days, six months after that. And boom, hey, let me go and get this. Or if my car decide, hey, we done, then I got no choice but to. Yeah. And so we'll see how it plays out. But it's going to wrap it up. You know, it's got that, that beef. I got to go. All right. Appreciate you, my brother. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to leave us a comment. Let us know what you like, don't like, what you want to see again. We always coming at you. And, um, uh, that's all I got. Everybody stay positive. Stay blessed. Kevin, take his own out. Again, you know, we're only two and two. I ain't going to waste time saying we home with this, home with that. Hey, we just a squad looking for a defense. If you know anybody that got a good one, whether it be uh, Juco, high school, or Pee Wee football, so we need them at uh, GHA Field of Arrowhead. I'll let you boys, but don't yell. Good night, everybody.